the further you get away from natural, the worse your life is going to be. It's really that simple. Everything that's going on in this world is a departure from natural. I, I feel like a baby would feel before we poison the baby with uh, apple juice and sugar and all this garbage food and get them hooked on sugar and they become a lifelong sugar consumer. It's sick what we're doing to children and I'm going to change that. And they're still eating the birthday cake and drinking the Pepsis and just like, oh, look at this little monitor. The fact that we live in a world where we have a device like this, it just blows my mind. Everything is backwards. Carrie here from Homestead How in the Carnivore Diet movie. I just hit 190 days of eating meat, beef, butter, bacon, and eggs only, and I feel amazing. I learned so much from a couple of guests. I spoke with Dr. Baker. I spoke with uh, Lee Kopis, who's Kent Carnivore, and I also spoke with my new friend, Mr. Jeffrey DeProsperis. And one of the biggest things I've learned all three of them had this similar message and it's pounding into my brain and I want you guys to hear this and learn it too because it's so important. You have to take your health into your own two hands. It sounds so simple in retrospect, but it was one of the biggest mistakes I've made my entire life. I've shown you guys my big container full of 25 different pills I was on. I trusted my doctors and, and don't get me wrong, I believe doctors mean well, I believe most doctors are good, but the system is so messed up and it's so screwed up. And a lot of these doctors see 100 patients a day. And uh, you have to take things into your own hands. And you can't just listen to your doctor. If I go to my doctor now, he's going to throw me on statins and some medication. And meanwhile, I'm healthier than I ever have been my entire life. One of the biggest things that really touched me this week was talking to uh, Jeffrey DeProsperis. He has stage 4 cancer. He started a YouTube channel called Blessings on My Journey, and he's just an amazing individual. And he took his health into his two ha own hands after he was told uh, he has stage four cancer. And after he was told that stage four cancer has gone from his colon into his liver. In fact, it was completely covering his liver so much they couldn't even say, oh, you got a tumor here or there. His whole liver is completely covered. They said, uh, Jeff, I'm sorry to tell you this. You have stage four cancer. It's inoperable, it's incurable, and you probably only have a couple months to live. And that was over a year ago, and there's an animal behind me, and I just heard coyotes over there. We're going to be okay. We're carnivores. That was over a year ago, and Jeff is doing amazing. He took his health into his own hands. He did his own research, and he learned what, what, he, what could he do in this situation, and he is absolutely doing the best that he could be doing given his situation and what's going on. The man uh, is fasting. In fact, I just spoke with him. He just started his fast up again. On Wednesday, he goes in for chemo. And for the uh, five days before that, he does a water fast. He's done this 28 times, 28 times. Every other week he gets chemo and he fasts and then he uh, gets the chemo and then he goes back on strict carnivore and he's almost always in ketosis. He just had a little break over summer from chemo, but he's been doing it this entire time and he feels great. The first three weeks that he was doing this, he was on the standard American diet before he found carnivore and he was suffering and he was weak. And one of the things he told me that's just crazy and another reason you need to take stuff into your own two hands is you put your trust in some of these doctors and some of these institutions and some of the stuff they're doing is just crazy and backwards. He goes in here in full ketosis, feeling great as best as he could given the scenario uh, when he gets his chemo. And you know what they do when he's done with the chemo? They come around with cookies and ensure, full of sugar. Cancer thrives on sugar. And that's what these healthcare places are doing. That's what they're doing. You have to take it into your own two hands. All that work and effort and they're, they're killing cancer with the chemo, hopefully, and then they're giving it sugar afterwards. It's so backwards. There's so many things in this world that are so backwards. Uh, I spoke to my friend Lee, who I mentioned, uh, Lee Copas. He's a uh, Kent Carnivore, awesome guy. He lost his colon uh, due to uh, irritable bowel disease, IBS, IBD, and uh, he had colitis. He had colitis in his colon so bad he was going 30 times a day. And he had to take his health into his own hands. He unfortunately lost his colon. And then he went into a deep depression. 
and he pulled himself out of it through the proper human diet and eating carnivore. He started eating good, and it was just like a light switch went off. His mood, everything improved. He went from just being horribly, horribly depressed and hopeless to having hope and joy to the point that he pulled over in his car and he recorded himself. This is amazing, guys. I feel amazing right now. I don't know what's going on. Sadly for him, though, his big message that I learned this week, that I want to share, I want to share things with you that I'm learning. A lot of people out there want to start doing carnivore. They want to start doing keto. They want to start eating the proper human diet. They want to change their life. They're sick of being fat like I was. They're sick of being uh, fatigued and depressed and anxious and are having all this arthritis and inflammation and body pain. People are so sick of it, but they're, they're too scared to start. And a lot of people are not going to start, maybe you if you're watching this, until you get desperate or hopeless. But for you, my message is, is that going to be too late? It was too late for Lee and he lost his colon. And my friend Jeff, as sad as it is to say, it was too late for him as well. I asked Jeff, what do you think caused your cancer? You always hear cancer and a lot of times the doctor's like, I don't know. Maybe it's genetics. Maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Jeff said straight to the camera, I believe I caused my own cancer. So um, through the foods he was eating, uh, through the stresses he was putting on his body, all these different factors, he believes that he caused his cancer. And he believes that if he was eating carnivore or the proper human diet leading up to that, that he wouldn't have gotten cancer. So that's my big message for people that are watching this. I hear a lot of people say, I want to do that. I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to do that the first of the year. I'm going to do that at the end of the month. Or I'm going to do that on Monday. Why? Do it now. You may not have till the end of the month. This could be your last breath. You may not have another day. Every breath you take should be a blessing. Uh, you should be thankful for it. And that was my other big thing I learned this week. It was about gratitude. I asked Jeff, I said, why is your YouTube channel called Blessings on My Journey? And he said, Kerry, since I had stage four cancer, I'm looking at everything that comes across me in my life as a blessing, no matter what it is. An amazing spirit, amazing person Jeff is. He's uh, He's one of my best friends, my new best friends. I have a lot of best friends. I know it sounds like I'm a middle schooler, but I don't care. I've been making so many friends on Carnivore. Uh, my buddy Bill, too, speaking of best friends, up in Alaska, just hit day 60 on Carnivore. He did a video from his desk. It, it brings a tear to my eye when I see him being able to leave his bed that he's been stuck in for four years. I'm going to go out and I'm going to visit Bill again. Initially, you guys all know this, I visited Bill with Emma and we filmed his story as he started Carnivore, 700 pounds at that time. And he hasn't left his house in four years. And now he's 60 days into it. His inflammation's going down. His mood is improving. He was hopeless and he's full of hope and joy now. I want to visit him. I'm going to, of course, visit him when he walks out those doors, when he loses his weight and he calls me and he's ready to walk out the doors for the first time in over four years. Spoiler alert uh, news, I'm going to do it in the meantime. I want to do it in the middle of winter when he's about halfway through his journey. I want to fly up there again. Hopefully uh, Emma or maybe one of the other girls can come with me because the other girls want to spend some time with them too and they really want to go. Uh, but I'm going to visit Bill again and get an update and see how he's doing in person, shake his hand, give him a hug and uh, see how life is like in Alaska in winter. A lot of people get seasonal depression and things like that. Spoke to Dr. Baker this week too. Dr. Baker was one of the first people doing carnivore. He wrote the book on carnivore. He called it carnivore. And he's starting up a uh, healthcare company called Rivero. It's actually just recently launched. And I love the sound of it. I can't wait to learn more. It's basically treating a lot of the issues that I tried to treat by myself for years by going to the doctor. And they threw pill after pill after pill at me with nutrition and therapy. And it's not just carnivore, it's keto too. It's called Rivero. It's really interesting. So I'm looking forward to learning that more. The other big thing that I had happen this week that just kind of blows my mind. Um, we had a family get together and I'm not, I'm not calling anyone out. I just, I learned more about something I didn't know about before. And that's these um, continuous glucose uh, monitors that basically, I guess you put on your arm and it's got a little needle or some pins on it. And people keep it on their arm and then they could take their phone and they could put it up to their arm and they could see their glucose reading and then get little alerts and alarms if their sugar is off. I've heard of those before, but I didn't really understand it until I saw it in action. A family member had one. A couple of my family members have it. And we were at a birthday party and they were drinking Pepsi and eating birthday cake and checking their monitor. And I'm just thinking like, what kind of world do we live in? Like, please leave a comment because maybe I'm not understanding how these things work. But if you get to the point that you're type 2 diabetic, possibly losing a limb, uh, 
that it necessitates getting an installation of a device that's like a hybrid, like it's you're like a cyborg now. You got this thing pl implanted on your arm, giving you these constant, continuous readings. If it's gone that far, why don't they just quit sugar? I I'm not being a jerk about it either. Like, is there other reasons for this? It's just insane to me. I look at sugar like an addictive drug. If I was addicted to cocaine, would they give me some sort of monitor and be like, well, if you just monitor and, and moderate that cocaine and have a little bit of it, make sure your cocaine numbers don't go up too high, then you'll be just fine. No, how about you get rid of the cocaine and how about you get rid of the sugar? They actually have a device that you install on your arm so that you can monitor and you can continue eating sugar. And then I see these people doing it and they're like, okay, I had the birthday cake. Oh, my numbers are really high. I better take it easy. I don't even see it working for the people I've seen use it. I've seen a couple people use these too. I see them use it and then they're like, oh yeah, that, that Pepsi put me over the edge. I got to be more careful going forward. Well, you already went over your numbers and the thing's beeping and the alarms are going off. Meanwhile, I'm sitting there eating a steak in ketosis and I have zero sugar uh, zero problems with insulin. My metabolic health is through the roof. I'm like, technically, I'm never going to do it, but I could be at one of these birthday parties. I could eat a birthday cake. And I'd be just fine. Well, I should be careful because I haven't done that in six months or anything like that. But in terms of my metabolic health, I would be just fine. And these people are suffering and losing limbs and literally fatigued and weak and their metabolic health is through the roof. Six X chance of having heart disease when you have poor metabolic health like that. And they're still eating the birthday cake and drinking the Pepsis and just like, oh, I'll look at this little monitor. The fact that we live in a world where we have a device like this, it just blows my mind. Everything is backwards. Everything is backwards. Brings me back to my friend Lee Copas. He said this during our interview together and it really stuck with me. He's like, Kerry, look around in summertime here. He's over in England and he's like, uh, I see people in summertime and they got this spray suntan lotion, which... Who knows what's in those chemicals and that mist you're spraying on your children. And people just psh, spraying it all over their body, completely blocking out the sun. They don't want any sun to hit their body. Putting on these big, huge sunglasses, a big summer hat, and they're hiding from the sun. Which is kind of an ironic thing because they're going out to the beach or into the sun, but then they completely hide from it. He's like, Kerry, they do that all day long. And then they go home and they go into their house. They take all that off. They take a shower, whatever. They turn every light on. They put all their huge 60-inch TV on. And they sit there till midnight with artificial lights. It's completely opposite and completely backwards from natural. Everything that's going on in this world is a departure from natural. And it's just insane to me. We've got continuous glucose monitors attached to our arms now so we can continue eating sugar. Everyone is fat and sick and depressed and they have aches and pains and depression and anxiety. And why is it? It's so simple. It's a departure from natural. It's happening more and more and it's becoming normal and it's becoming common, but it's not something I'm going to let slip. It's not something normal to me. I see it so clearly now that I'm out of this brain fog that I was in for so many years now that I'm a carnivore. So it's just a crazy world. What can we learn from all of this? I don't want to just sit here and rant. The further you get away from natural, the worse your life is going to be. It's really that simple. Um, I think about natural in, in multiple ways. The biggest way is what do you ingest? What do you put into your body? I only put things into my body that I believe humans have eaten since the start of time. Our ancestrally appropriate diet. Every species of animal eats their own food. A cow eats grass, a koala bear eats eucalyptus, a lion eats gazelles and meat, and that's it. Humans are the only big brain ones eating all this other garbage, and everyone is sick and fatigued and has all of these issues. That's one of the things I do to be natural. The other things I do to be natural is, what would humans have done throughout time? We wouldn't have been sitting in an office for 12 hours under fluorescent lights, staring at a computer screen, and then going home and staring at a phone, and then staring at a TV, and then going to bed for four hours. We wouldn't have been doing that. Now, some of that's unavoidable. People got to work. But a lot of it is avoidable and there's ways around it. So getting out and getting natural sunlight without hats and sunglasses on and going for walks and breathing in fresh air, uh, those are some natural things we're doing. Not putting all of these chemicals and um, detergents and deodorants that got aluminum in them and putting all this stuff and makeup all over our bodies, that's not natural. When you see someone with one of those big green sodas coming out of the gas station, I'm not judging. That used to be me. I started with the little Diet Mountain Dew, the medium one and the bigger one, but it was diet, so I was healthy. That was a joke. Gallon of this neon green liquid. What is more unnatural than that? Have you ever seen a liquid like that out in nature? It's one of the most unnatural things. What is one of the most unnatural things 
is taking a piece of paper, when you, when you phrase it this way, it's funny. You roll it up, you put some stuff inside, some plant material in it, you light it on fire, you stick the paper in your mouth and you smoke it. How unnatural is that if you really take a step back or if you're an alien up in the sky and you're looking down, you're like, what the heck is that guy doing? He's lighting that paper on fire, putting it in his mouth and then putting the smoke into his lungs. Of course, people are starting to realize that's pretty unnatural and it causes cancer and all sorts of issues. People still do it. You, you do you, I'll do me. But it's an example of something that's unnatural and what happens? You get cancer. Unnatural cancer. Unnatural sickness. Unnatural depression. Unnatural anxiety. Unnatural obesity. As you get more and more unnatural, you become an unnatural human being and you become miserable. I am right now on day 190 of carnivore. I believe I feel amazing because I'm the most natural human being I could be. I, I feel like a baby would feel before we poison the baby with uh, apple juice and sugar and all this garbage food and get them hooked on sugar and they become a lifelong sugar consumer. It's sick what we're doing to children and I'm going to change that. I'm fired up about this carnivore diet documentary. There's so many hopeless people out there and now I want to include a section about cancer and this, this amazing work and regimen that my friend Jeff DeProsperous has come up with for himself. There's a million people right now as we speak going through chemotherapy and now Jeff isn't a doctor. He doesn't claim to be and he's not saying do what I'm doing. Jeff is saying I wish someone would have showed me this example as an option for myself going into chemo. He didn't have that example and out of these other million people do they have that example? Jeff's uh, fasting regimen includes, it's not just carnivore, um, it's fasting, carnivore, exercise, and there's like three other things. So he's going to do a video getting into that, but I want to share that for the million people who are doing chemo right now that, hey, this is an option, maybe you want to look into it. Now you have the option, you don't necessarily have to be hopeless. Carnivore diet documentary, the 24-hour live stream, I'm still completely humbled and blown away by what happened. I stayed till hour 27 to show some of these incredible stories of hope. We did these little segments we're calling HOPE, and that stands for Highly Optimistic Personal Experiences. People's carnivore journey condensed down to five minutes or less, and it's just, it's a beautiful thing, and then you see these over and over and over again. I wanna include more of these in the carnivore diet documentary, professionally filmed on our Netflix approved camera, uh, so we're going to be doing that as well. We have some other big announcements in terms of filming next steps. I'm going to be announcing those soon. Not quite yet. You got to be patient. The last thing I want to mention is we have an awesome newsletter. I just put out the first uh, edition, I guess, of that newsletter. And in the newsletter, you're going to get insider information. You're going to get behind the scenes on filming the documentary. You're going to get invites to meetups. We're not going to send these anywhere else. It's free. We're going to be respectful. But we want to keep this momentum going with our carnivore diet documentary. And that's the best way to stay connected with you all. So if you want, in the link in the description below, you click on it, put your email address in it. It takes 20 seconds and you will thank me. You can always unsubscribe if you, if you don't like it, but I don't think you will. We're also continuing to sell those little Redmond salt shakers. That The delivery just went out for those. I apologize. It took longer than we expected. I appreciate it. Every penny we made from those goes to the Carnivore Diet Documentary. Every penny we make in the future, if you didn't get one yet, goes to the Carnivore Diet Documentary as well. And so we got inundated with a whole bunch of those. And Jen and I just took this huge package. It took them a couple hours at the post office to send all these out. It took a little longer going forward. It'll be a lot quicker. We also have the water bottles for sale. Every penny from those goes to the documentary. And the last thing is memberships and shirts. You can buy shirts or memberships. Every penny goes to the Carnivore Diet Documentary. We raised so much during the 24-hour live stream. We got enough to get us going, but I don't know if it's going to get us to home plate yet. It's going to be very expensive to go around and film these um, experts, the doctors. We're going to have to have a crew at each of these places. It's going to be very expensive. So we've, we've got enough to keep going. I hate uh, asking for money, but every penny goes to the documentary. So thank you so much for everyone that participated in a 24-hour live stream. And subscribe on the channel and check back. I did a, a video uh, not too long ago. It was about 30 minutes. It condensed everything down in the 24-hour live stream. We had Dr. Barry. We had Dr. Baker. We had Dr. Chafer, Dr. Dr. Chafee, Dr. Kiltz, Dr. Tony Hampton, Dr. Lisa Wiedemann, Dr. Philip Ovadia, the heart surgeon, Dante from Ferrigno Freedom, Amanda Carnivorous Me, Laura Spath was on there. I mean, everybody was on there. I shouldn't say everybody. Unfortunately, we couldn't quite get everybody. Some people were traveling and other things like that, but we're going to have to do another one and get some more folks on there. Intentional Carnivore, Sean hosted with me. Uh, Adam from Carnivore Today, Alia Wells hosted. Graham was there, JT, the whole team. So check out that video and go support all those folks that were helping with it. 
Biggest takeaways to end this video, the name of the channel is Homestead How Learn With Us. You have to take your health into your own two hands. And you have to realize that everything in this world is backwards. It really truly is. I know it sounds crazy, but all the advice I've been given my whole life, if I would have just done the opposite, my life would be a million times better. Think about that. Take control of your own life. Realize things are backwards. And you got you to gotta take ownership and you got to do your own research and you got to do it yourself. On day 190 of carnivore, I'm a carnivore for life. I've never felt better. I'm down 100 pounds since my heaviest. Didn't lose all that on carnivore, but lost most of it. Lost some of that on keto. Depression and anxiety, I'm so happy to report, non-existent. I have zero anxiety on carnivore. I'm sleeping like a baby every single night. I'm living my life to the fullest human potential. I, I, there's nothing more I want for in life. Um, I, I said it in my first video, you give me a lottery ticket for a billion dollars, I will rip that up in a second. My life is perfect, I'm happy, I'm blessed, I'm thankful, I'm grateful, I have gratitude, and everything is a blessing, including all of you. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope this video helped you all out a little bit.